Welcome to part two of our short series on OLED TV screen burn-in. In part one, we talked about screen burn-in in general, how we got where we are today, what causes burn-in, how you can avoid it, who can't avoid it, and why burn-in isn't the big issue it once was. Today, we're gonna talk about the new QD OLED TVs, how they're different, whether they have a higher burn-in risk than W OLED TVs, and why this whole burn-in conversation has intensified after all these years of OLED TV improvement. Welcome back everyone, I'm Caleb Dennison and today we continue our discussion about OLED TV burn-in with a focus on QD OLED TVs and what's going on with them. If you haven't seen part one of this video, here's a link. I highly suggest watching that and coming back to this video. Before we move on, your clicks of support are always appreciated as are your comments. I'm sure I'll get a ton on the first OLED burn-in video and I reckon the same will be true for this one. I look forward to reading them, most of them anyway. All right, let's get back to it, shall we? So as we ease into talking about QD OLED TVs and whether you need to worry about burn-in, specifically on those, the Samsung S95B, S95C, or S90C, or the Sony A95K and A95L, I need to talk about some notions that I've been guilty of tossing around over the past few years. Ideas like reasonable expectations, abusive use, normal use, and so on. It is my position, my personal opinion, okay, that expecting any piece of technology to do whatever you want without any risk of consequence is unreasonable. Furthermore, the idea that TV manufacturers should have to warranty their products against any failure, no matter the cause, is also totally unreasonable. There is such a thing as extenuating circumstances. We have to discern between reasonable use and abusive use, and we have to discern between reasonable expectations and unreasonable expectations. For example, a lot of mobile phones today are water resistant. Few of them are actually waterproof, but just because your phone is water resistant doesn't mean you should expect to leave it out in the pouring rain all night and expect it to work perfectly when you find it outside the next morning. Likewise, if you drive a car with a manual transmission, you should expect that transmission to work for many years. Unless you drive like a maniac or happen to live in a very hilly area where you're constantly burning the clutch on steep hills from a cold start every day, several times a day. The same is true for TVs. There's such a thing as normal use and we'll call it excessive use. There is such a thing as reasonable expectation and unreasonable expectation. It's just, where are those lines drawn? Well, that's where things get a little confusing. But there are some constants here, namely the type of use that can cause burn-in has not changed. And the guidance for whether or not you should worry about burn-in risk with an OLED is almost exactly the same as it was for plasma. To get back to my stick shift metaphor, if you're gonna be burning the clutch a lot, then maybe you shouldn't have a manual transmission. If an OLED is a stick shift, then an LCD is an automatic. You're better off going with the automatic or LCD TV. But if you're an enthusiast who wants a uniquely fun, engaging experience and aren't going to put excessive strain on the clutch, I mean OLED TV, then go for it. That's why time and again, I tell folks in my TV reviews, look, if you watch news channels or weather channels or anything else with one of these tickers at the bottom for several hours a day, day after day, month after month, don't get an OLED TV. You will almost certainly experience burn-in sooner or later. But if you watch a lot of varied stuff, hell, even if you do watch CNN or Fox News for a solid two hours a day, you're probably gonna be just fine. Except there's a new wrinkle. And this is the thing that has some folks hung up on making a buying decision right now. It's reignited the burn-in conversation and reinvigorated concern and discussion. We don't yet know how QD OLED is going to hold up long-term. Now, I've got an explanation on the technical differences between these new QD OLED screens and the W OLED screens that we've had for the past 10 years. It's right here, should you like to learn more. But the long and short of it is that QD OLED relies on one blue OLED subpixel to create light. Unlike W OLED, it does not have a white subpixel to help boost brightness. Now, because QD OLED doesn't rely on a light sucking color filter to create colors, those blue OLED subpixels don't have to be driven as hard to achieve a hearty level of brightness. But it would seem that may not extend their life enough to prevent them from degrading to the point of causing a burn-in effect. 
Because, if you aren't already aware, the site Ratings.com is engaged in a longevity test of some 100 TVs it has at its facility. Included in that longevity test are a few QD OLED models from Samsung and Sony and some W OLED models from LG and Sony. The early reporting from this testing, and by early reporting I mean after two to three months of testing, showed that the QD OLED TVs showed noticeable signs of burn-in, whereas the W OLED models did not, all factors being equal. But let's peel back the layers of the onion here. We need to understand what's happening in this test and how that can affect the OLED TV's performance. And before I go further, I just want to express my appreciation for the work that Ratings.com is doing here. This is a monumental undertaking, which I can't even imagine how many hours were spent carefully planning and executing such a large scale testing endeavor. I think this is admirable work and I appreciate the intention behind the work. I also appreciate that Ratings has adjusted their testing based on feedback they received from readers, viewers, and likely manufacturers in an effort to be fair. But there's one factor that I am hung up on and I wanted to bring it up for discussion. During this testing, the TVs apparently display varying types of content which intend to replicate what we might consider real world viewing. The TVs are also cycled on and off, which gives the TVs a rest and allows the OLED TVs to run their cycles designed to help stave off burn-in. And I'm good with all of that. Most of the cycling on and off involves one and a half hours on and half an hour off except this one cycle, which has the TVs on for nine hours straight. That right there brings up a lot of questions for me, questions to which I do not yet have the answers. I'm trying to get them, but that's gonna take some time and some digging and prodding and poking and you get the idea. I hope to know more and I'll share it with you as soon as I do. But the questions are important for us to consider. What does nine hours of continuous use do to an OLED TV? Is nine hours every day anywhere close to mimicking real world behavior? I kind of think it doesn't. I mean, I understand why Ratings is doing this. They need to accelerate the test in order to provide meaningful insights. Otherwise, we'd find out ourselves using our own TVs at the same time they got their results and that's not useful at all. So the acceleration is necessary, I get that. But what if the acceleration itself causes exponentially faster wear on the TV's OLED panel? And I don't mean it just speeds up the wear down process, I mean it wears it out faster than it should. What if the nature of this acceleration does the opposite of what it's intended to do? What if accelerating the test means that the results aren't indicative of what will happen in what we might consider a normal use scenario. Until we can objectively quantify the effects of nine hours of continuous QD OLED TV use day after day, and until we can define what typical consumer use actually is so that we have some comparative metrics, it's hard for me to say that the conclusions from this testing are meaningful. In fact, it's entirely possible that it is actually doing more harm than good. We can draw the conclusion that W OLED technology is more resilient to a torture test than 2022 QD OLED technology is. Sure, that much is certain now, but does that mean that QD OLED owners are realistically at higher risk of suffering from burn-in? Look, I know this is just a dumb Twitter poll, so take this with a grain of salt, but a poll I recently ran, which so far has only 255 responses, not a huge sampling, I admit. It shows that just over 51% use their TV for under four hours at a time. 27% said it was on between six to eight hours, but because I'm an idiot and didn't include anything between four and six, I think that might include anything from four to eight hours. Still, I'm surprised the percentage is that high. And then 16% say they leave their TV on eight hours or more a day. I don't know how indicative those numbers are of real life, but I can say that I'm surprised as hell that just under 50% of users leave their TV on more than four hours a day. But also, it doesn't seem like many folks leave it on for more than eight hours a day. 
All of this to say that I don't see enough evidence proving that QD OLED TVs are more susceptible to burn in than the first generation of prior TV technologies that could also burn in. And presently, I don't think we're gonna have good data for another year or two until QD OLED TVs have been in homes for a few years. And even then, QD OLED TVs are already evolving, seeing improvements after just one year of being on the market. So I think we should apply the same guidance to QD OLED TVs that we've been providing to folks worried about burn-in for the past couple of decades. The same guidance I offered in part one of this video. So please allow me to repeat. I would not advise playing the same content with static images like banners, tickers, head-up displays, or static game UI for more than three or four hours a day, every day for weeks or months on end. That kind of use is likely to cause a problem eventually. Leave ESPN on for eight hours one day, but limit use to an hour or two on most other days, you'll probably be just fine. Same goes for video games. If you go hard on one game with static elements for eight hours a day for a week, maybe two, you'll probably be okay. But if you're gonna play for four hours a day or more for a solid month, that feels like you're treading into slightly risky territory. I would say if that kind of use doesn't sound at all like anything you do, then you probably don't have much to worry about. The evidence points to the fact that you don't. If you think you might use your TV in that manner sometimes, but not all the time, again, you're probably gonna be okay. But if you are honest with yourself and say, I'm leaving ESPN on for six hours a day, every day, because that's how I roll, well, an OLED TV isn't for you. You wanna drive your TV hard, and that's just fine. No judgment, but OLEDs don't like to be driven hard. The freedom you seek, maybe the freedom you got used to and expect, it's in an LCD-based TV, and those have gotten pretty amazing as well. Thanks as always for watching, folks. This was a challenging topic to cover. I hope I covered it in a way that is helpful and meaningful to you. Whether I did or did not, will you tell me so in the comments section? That'll help make better and better videos in the future. Thanks so much for liking and subscribing as well. I'll see you on the next one. And until then, here's two other videos I think you might like.